If you haven't heard, a Blender developer called Pierre created a collection of pre-built nodes that can save you the hassle of setting up everything manually. The nodes pop right into the shader editor, and you can access them through the Shift plus A menu. They are neatly categorized, so it is easy to find what you will need. Take Heated for example. This one is great for creating heat effects. You can adjust things like intensity, radius, and deformation to get that glowing look for materials. And if you're working on stuff like engines or furnaces, this node makes it much faster to get the right effect. It even lets you use ambient occlusion to control how heat spreads based on proximity to other objects. Another useful one is Proximity Mask It, which generates a mask based on how far something is from an object. You can use it for things like burn marks, frost, or dirt buildup on surfaces. It is great for adding details that react to their environment. Then you have other nodes like Color Shifted for randomizing colors across objects, Edge Wear It for adding wear to edges, and Wrap It, which is great if you need to mess around with UVs. And I would say, Note It is a solid choice if you need lots of procedural work and some shortcuts for shaders. Note it is one of the new Blender add-ons that were released recently, but in today's video, we have even more add-ons that can help you make your life easier. So I'm gonna be diving into several other add-ons, and each one of these solves a specific problem. Whether it is working with shaders, topology, rendering, making hair, managing your assets, and more. We have a new add-on called Delta Quad, which shifts the spotlight to geometry. This add-on helps you convert angons into quads, which is super helpful if you're working on cleaning up messy topology. It is not really built for high-density sculpted meshes, but for simpler cases like cleaning angon faces, and in this case, it gets the job done. One thing I like about it is how you can work step by step. So, instead of reworking the entire mesh all at once, you can just select specific faces and convert them to quads as you go. This gives you more control and makes it easier to preserve important details. And there are even two modes for how it integrates the quads, depending on what works better for you and your models. And to use it, you just select some faces in the edit mode, then right click and choose Delta Quad from the menu. And generally speaking, it is a small Python-based tool, so it will work on any operating system where Blender runs. And if you try the beta version before, you will notice that this one handles low quad counts really well. Stylize Comp Master makes it easier to add stylized effects directly in Blender. Once you install it, it adds a panel to the M panel where you can enable node setups and preview composite effects. You've got a variety of effect categories that you can pick from, and you can tweak their settings or even save your setups as presets. The interface is pretty straightforward. You've got four main buttons, two for activating the node setup and previewing the effects, and a couple more for advanced settings. There is also a built-in safeguard that limits how many effects that you can apply at once, so you won't accidentally crash your software. Another cool feature is how you can adjust layers to experiment with different visual outcomes. Rearranging the layers often gives you surprising results, so it is worth taking some time to play around with it. If you're into concept art or stylized animations, this add-on, generally speaking, makes it a lot easier to get creative without needing external tools. The next new add-on on the list is Easy Overlay. Keeping track of reference images while modeling can be sometimes annoying, but Easy Overlay can make it, well, easier. It lets you pin images directly in the viewport, and unlike Blender's default options, these pinned images stay put no matter how you move the camera, and that's a game changer for modeling. You can load up to 9 images, and you can layer them and scale or reposition them however you want. If you need transparency, no problem. Swapping out images is quick too. This is especially handy if you are working on something with lots of reference images, like vehicles or characters. And once you install it, you will find everything in the M panel under Easy Overlay. And generally speaking, it is user-friendly and keeps your reference images visible whether you are in perspective or the orthographic view. Another new Blender add-on is called Geo See-Through. 
which simplifies working with complex scenes by improving object visibility. Its main features include toggle and transparency and wireframe views for selected or non-selected objects. This makes it easier to focus on specific parts of your model without losing the context of the surrounding scene. For instance, you can make non-selected objects semi-transparent while keeping your active selection solid. Alternatively, you can reverse this and make the selected object transparent, which is helpful when working on inner components. The transparency level can be adjusted using an alpha slider, and you can even enable wireframe views with customizable opacity. One practical use case is editing large assemblies or environments. By isolating specific objects visually, you can work more efficiently without navigating through layers of overlapping geometry. Now, while the add-on has a minor limitation, I mean with component selections behind transparent objects, switching to wireframe can solve the issue. And Geo See-Through is especially handy for architectural or mechanical projects, where scene clarity is critical. Speaking of clarity, the next add-on called Empano Manager will help you focus and organize Blender's interface. You see, Blender's Empanel can get cluttered really quickly, especially if you have installed a lot of add-ons, and Empano Manager offers a way to streamline this by letting you create custom tabs, assign add-ons to them, and even collapse or hide selections that you don't use frequently. Generally, the add-on is intuitive. So after the installation, you can start creating tabs right away, naming them based on your workflow. For instance, grouping modeling tools under one tab and rendering tools under another. This makes it faster to locate the tools that you need without scrolling through a long list of add-ons. Another useful feature is the ability to exclude certain add-ons from being managed. If there are tools that you rarely use but don't want to install, you can hide them to keep your interface clean. Additionally, the add-on includes update management, so you can check for and download the latest versions of your add-ons directly from the panel. And for anyone working on diverse projects or frequently switching between workflows, the M-Panel Manager provides a straightforward way to customize and optimize the Blender's interface. Another new Blender add-on is called Hairflow, and this one can be your solution for simulating hair dynamics inside the Blender. It works with curved objects, which can be created from meshes or existing geometry. And once your hair curves are ready, you combine them to a target object, like a character's head for example, and then you can start simulating. The add-on handles scaling and rotation, keeping the hair synchronized with its parent, which is really important. Key features of the add-on include hair resolution control, which resamples curves for smoother simulations, in addition to adjustable parameters like stiffness, reactivity, wind, and gravity. You can also add collision objects to simulate interactions between hair and other geometries, like strands brushing against a character's shoulders. For performance, Hairflow includes a proxy function that reduces the number of hair strands during simulation while maintaining the overall shape. It also supports partial selection, allowing you to apply different physics settings to specific parts of the hair, like making shorter strands stiffer while longer ones can flow freely. The add-on even lets you attach objects, like hair ties or clips, and you can do that to specific points on the hair, ensuring they move naturally with the simulation. And if you are working on character animations or stylized hair effects, this add-on can make the process much more manageable. Last but not least, we're going to talk about a new add-on called Gamepad Camera Control. This add-on brings camera control to your fingertips using a game controller. So basically, it lets you move your camera naturally through the scene while maintaining precision. You can dolly, track, lift, tilt, pan, and roll, covering all six degrees of freedom with ease. And the add-on allows for customization of controls, letting you assign camera movements to specific buttons or joystick inputs. For instance, the left joystick can control horizontal movements while the right joystick handles rotation. There is also a smooth operation function, combining button inputs for more refined motions. Other features include adjustable speed settings, which lets you fine-tune movements directly through the gamepad or in the UI panel. You can also lock the camera onto objects to keep them in frame, 
making it easier to follow your subject during animations. And the add-on even supports local and word movement modes, giving you more control over how the camera interacts with the scene, in addition to more exciting features that you can check for yourself. So guys, if you are interested in these add-ons, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.